Laszlo Nemes, uh, there have been so many films made about the Holocaust. Son of Saul feels like a story that I've never seen before. I'm wondering where the idea for it came from. It came from text, it doc written documents uh, by the members of a special squad called the Sonderkommando in Auschwitz, in the camp of Auschwitz. These were the workers, um, you know, chosen for the, for the physical ability among other prisoners and forced to, male prisoners, forced to be in the crematorium and work in the crematorium to, to make the whole machinery of killing of Auschwitz work. They were the factory workers in this factory of death. And these people were, you know, a few hundred, a few thousand uh, at some point, uh, were isolated from the rest of the camp. They were better fed, better clothed, but they knew they would be liquidated, and usually they were liquidated. But these people wrote, some of them wrote about their everyday experience, and, um, and I found these documents, I mean, not me, but I, f I came upon these documents mm -hmm. that were found after the war. And, um, and it was the beginning of the film because I wanted, I mean, of, the, of my ambition to make this film because I wanted to find a way in cinematic terms to transport the viewer to the here and now mm -hmm. uh, as, as much as I was transported to the here and now of the extermination when I was reading these texts. Well, it certainly feels very, um, you know, even though the events of the movie are 70 years removed, uh, the style of the film really makes it feel like it's alive and in the here and now, you know. Yeah. Um, can you talk a bit about that? Um, it, we wanted an immersive film. Mm -hmm. We wanted to, have, to, ha to be with, the, with one character because mm -hmm. one human being is the reference point that can be understood by another human mm -hmm. being who is the viewer. This he the our main character is the reference is the measure of everything that's going on around him, and we cannot represent the whole extermination because by frontally showing the camp and illustrating you only reduce the scope of it. We it had Auschwitz cannot be, you know, shown. It can be hinted at, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and we wanted to show, you know, very little of it, uh, you know, through the, the filter or the or mirror, the mirror of the human face, and it had to be one member of the Zona Commando. Uh, that was my idea, um, so that in in a way we really rely on the viewer um, to recreate something of the infinity of the suffering and the infinity of evil that's taking place. Right, I mean, that's what's so remarkable about the movie, is that it feels both very intimate, because it is about this one person, and yet it says so much yeah. about the scope. Yeah, and yeah, the absolutely. We ha we, that's why we came up with this uh, visual strategy. Yeah, I mean, I love all of those uh, unbroken takes in the film, where the camera is just following this character around. Yeah. And you're seeing things as he's seeing yeah. them. Or rather, he's not, well, you don't see, but only right. feel things that he, that he doesn't look at. Well, yeah. his, I mean, uh, his eyes are so reflective yes. of so yeah. much. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, absolutely. It was important to immerse the viewer in the reality mm -hmm. and, uh, and not you know, disclose the entire reality with only a very small fraction of it. Mm -hmm. The relationship uh, between him and this boy, you know, you, you tell people that this is a film about uh, a man who takes a corpse to be his adoptive son, and you think, well, that just sounds completely macabre, but there's, you know, you watch the movie and there's a real nobility and a selflessness to what his mission is, you know, to give this boy a proper burial. You know, can you talk a bit about that? 
we d- we don't want to re- we didn't want to reveal too much about that because of we, course we not. knew that it was the secret at the heart you know within Saul's heart the main character's heart mm-hmm. so we could only hint at it uh, this is the story of the film you know the story of the the journey of the viewer uh, what the viewer has to make of this of this uh, story you know to to decide whether it has any kind of importance at some point if it's his son or not. Mm-hmm. Um, talking about, you know, just from a technical level, um, you know, you've got everything else going on. You've also got period that you have to deal with. Yeah. So I'm wondering what kind of research you did. Yeah. We, we researched extensively. My uh, co-writer is, has a background in history. Mm-hmm. I have a background in history. We're not scared of doing period pieces because we know how to read a, a historical book mm-hmm. we know how to you know how to read history we don't uh, we're not s- scared of that and we're not going into historical subjects uh, to um, uh, to uh, you know emphasize some uh, you know to to to, to um, um to really um, uh, try to impress with you know production design elements or or or, or costumes, we, we 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 know that we want we we knew that we wanted to go back to the source material, know as much as possible about the you know the 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 rules within the camp, the situation within the camp, so uh, that. Uh, we can we could give something very very raw about this reality, mm-hmm. but this reality has been, you know, communicated so many times in in a you know in in a in a in a transformed way, uh, adapted way by cinema, and we wanted to go back to the basics, mm-hmm. and um, and that's why um, that's why it was important to have this approach. Uh, to know as much as possible and then decide what to keep and and how to take some liberties. Mm-hmm. Although they think we're we're pretty accurate on, on on a lot of things. Right. From a technical level, I mean, one of the things I noticed um, was that you shot the film in Academy ratio. Yeah. You know, I mean, was that a part of recreating the period or? It was a part of restricting the uh, the the. the the narrowing the uh, the scope of the visual scope oh, of it, yeah. you know, make making it uh, one three three uh, means that you you restrain the you know the horizontal scope and and make it as a portrait of one man mm-hmm. and not making a spectacle out of the out of the surroundings. It's also we didn't want to make a spectacle out of. Mm-hmm. Out of the suffering and all the, of the of the camp, we were in the middle of it, and and it's here and now, so it has to be very realistic. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Man. Um, talk a bit about uh, working with Grizzly, because I mean, so much of it is. I mean, it's all from his perspective, and yeah. there's a lot that is left unsaid. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, but like in life. You know, as to, as much as in life or 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 in in a concentration camp, you mm-hmm. know, people don't have to talk. Right. Uh, so I'm wondering, like, how you as a director worked with him to, you know, bring out those uh, those moments of silence and to help, you know, convey, you know, what he's thinking or, you know. We we, we wanted to keep our actors from projecting their. Mm-hmm. 2014 or 15 emotion onto their characters. This sort of post-war interpretation and emotion. Uh, so we had to keep them in a very, in a very low key. I, I had to, I had to, you know, really work with them on that. Mm-hmm. So um, they, they try to, you know, invent a code of uh, within this trauma world. How you know the scope of of emotions that we, that we we could use, and it wasn't a big scope because we are in a traumatized uh, you know context, 
So uh, Geza was, uh, he had a very intimate understanding, immediate understanding, instinctive understanding of this. So we, he, he, I just had to, you know, say a few words and he understood immediately. Mm-hmm. There's no moment of lightness or relief in this film, really. Um, I'm wondering, like, was it difficult going to that place every single right. day? I, I don't think there's or... lightness, but there's hope. Right. And this hope is different, you know. Light, you know, relief gives relief, but hope gives something else, you know. Mm-hmm. And this is the question of the film: Is there some kind of hope possible even in this dark, darkest world? Mm-hmm. And um, uh, so it was difficult to go there, and it was difficult for everybody. But I think we had a sense of mission. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, for me it was different, difficult, and uh, but you know I had to battle, you know, and and uh, I had to be there, and I, uh, you know, it was a it was a tough ride, I guess, but mm-hmm. I had to do it. Well, add to that the fact that I mean this is one of your first movies, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. It's my first movie. Yeah. So I mean, it's my first feature. Yeah. Uh, you know what was what was that like on top of all of it? You know, it was uh, dancing on the uh, on the edge of the abyss. You know, mm-hmm. so um, so that's what happened. You know, every every day it was dancing there. You know, and really close to the to the precipice. Mm-hmm. So we we were uh, every. I was scared, but I had to overcome it. I guess right. I want to go back to the, uh, you know, you mentioned hope, and I think that's what's so powerful about the film. You know, here's this character who is, you know, has to do all of these awful things, and yet takes on this noble task. And there's no happy ending in the yeah. film, and yet, you know, there is that feeling of hope for humanity. You yeah, know? absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's the that's at the heart of the film. You know how. Uh, when there's no more God and religion and hope, is there still um, the possibility of a human voice within that a voice that would allow us to remain uh, to remain human, you mm-hmm. know, and a sort of inner God that could exist. That's the question of the film, and and that the the, the journey of the viewer is also to uh, to discover. Uh, whether it makes sense for him or her to um, to um, this this question, you know. Mm-hmm. Were there any scenes that gave you a particular amount of difficulty in the filming? I mean, there's a lot of, you know, even though it is so intimate, you have a lot of sequences like the uh, the uprising of the camp towards the end of the film that are really technically difficult. So I'm wondering if there is anything that we don't we won't do much spoiling. Anymore. No, no, no. <laughs> um, but you know, a lot of handling of extras. Yeah, and... yeah. It was a very difficult preparation, but it, we had to prepare. Mm-hmm. I had a director friend who was hired to, ins- you know, to take care of background actors. So everybody was directed by a director in this film, which is good because mm-hmm. uh, because the the context was so important, the camp was so important. So we had to. We had to be um, very well prepared because we had only had twenty eight days of shoot. Wow! So um, that was uh, that was, you know, every day was a different challenge, but uh, but somehow you know we made it happen. What do you hope viewers take away from this film? What you know, what I said about <laughs> hope. Yeah. What I said about hope. What I said about you know, it's just that, you know. Uh, uh, genocide is a constant possibility within within civilization. It's the, really the issue of you know the evil within civilization, self destructive nature. And if we don't interrogate that, if we don't, um, we are not aware of that. Uh, then it might be you know we, we we're heading towards disaster. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>